In this episode, we get a sweet taste of that van life with the 2020 Chrysler Pacifica PHEV. It's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Let's talk about van life. Why a van? Why not a three-row crossover? Well, the fact is, you don't see YouTubers hashtagging crossover life. And for good reason. Only van life gives you enough space for all your stuff without compromising practical drivability. Of course, not everyone buys a van to live in it. Most buyers are normal people with regular houses that just want to shuttle their kids around. And for those buyers, there are three major players in the van universe. The Toyota Sienna, Honda Odyssey, and this, the Chrysler Pacifica Plug-in Electric Hybrid. The Pacifica Hybrid Limited starts at $45,545. Our test vehicle has a number of options, which pushes the price to $50,005, including destination. Of course, the big attraction with the Pacifica is the fact that it can run purely on electric power. And once you use that up, it will operate like a normal hybrid with traditional fuel. Under the hood is a V6, just like in the normal Pacifica. But here, power has been reduced from 287 horsepower down to 260. And using fancy math, that incorporates both gas and electric powertrain outputs combined. The win here is that this one gets up to 82 MPGe. Run out of batteries and you still get a decent 30 miles per gallon as rated by the EPA. Of course, one of the main reasons to get a van is the ability to hold lots of people and stuff. With a wave of a foot under the rear gate, it opens to reveal more than 32 cubic feet of storage behind the third row. In our test car, a couple of the cubic feet were taken up by the Mopar Emergency Kit, which is a $175 option. With that removed, folding down the third row is easy. We've now opened up more than 87 cubic feet. Where the standard Pacifica can slide the second row into the floor, their so-called stow-and-go system, because this is a hybrid, that area is actually taken up with batteries. So the second row's captain's chairs will have to be pulled out. This is actually a fairly simple operation. With all rows out and down, the Pacifica has more than 140 cubic feet available. Take a moment to appreciate just how flat that floor is. Throw down an inflatable mattress, put in a couple shelves, and it's already looking better than some starter studio apartments. It's even got a sunroof. Putting the seats back in the second row is just as easy as a couple latches. Where you can option a built-in vacuum cleaner in the non-hybrid Pacifica, which helps you keep your van life clean, this one comes with a more useful level one charging cable, because you won't always find a level two charger wherever you go. The remote is pretty clever. In addition to starting the motor, it can open both sliding doors so the kids can get in before they ram into the side of it. What, it's just my kids? Okay, fine. Speaking of kids, this test vehicle also includes the Uconnect theater system with wireless streaming. It is a $995 option and it is bundled in the Advanced Safety Tech group. This gives you a lot of great stuff for a pretty decent price. It includes a 360 camera, full speed collision warning, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warnings, parking sonars, and park assist in addition to a pair of networked touchscreens and dual HDMI ports for the second row, as well as headphones and remotes. As part of the limited trim, our vehicle also has AC power, privacy screens, and three zone aircon, as well as some other niceties. With all the seats up, the third row does fit a full-size adult. The $1,795 tri-panel sunroof lets in a lot of light, even into the third row. Up front, you won't just find a spacious cabin lined with premium Napa leather. It's also loaded with a ton of useful elements, like umbrella holders by the front seats. The driver does get an eight-way power adjustable seat with memory, in addition to multi-stage heating and cooling. The gauge cluster is bright and informative with a large digital display in the center. The steering wheel takes some getting used to. It has a metal insert between contrasting leather. Yeah, the leather and metal does feel great. It's just a bit different. Most functions can be controlled from the 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment system. This includes both front and rear climate controls. Of course, traditional buttons are also available for quick access. I've really come to like the Uconnect navigation system. Here's a quick search for the nearest Starbucks in real time. I'll wait. 
That didn't take long at all. Of course, you can also plug in a mobile device through USB for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. There's even a handy bin to stow your phone. Once plugged in, you then have the option to give voice commands to your mobile device for even easier navigation. Find the nearest Starbucks. And voila. Hey look, coffee. With coffee in hand, it's a good time to check out all the storage up front. There are both slidey bins and open bins with power, all in arm's reach. Now let's go back to Uconnect. Our test car came with the 20-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which is good and standard on limited trim models. It's also XM satellite ready for those long interstate road trips. When you include the aforementioned option package, advanced safety on this loaded limited is comprehensive, including an adjustable surround camera system, full speed collision mitigation, and blind spot warnings. Visibility is also quite good due to smart placement of the mirrors. Adaptive cruise control is included as well. This being a plug-in hybrid, it can run on either gas or electricity exclusively, unless it runs out of electricity stored in the batteries, at which point it acts like a traditional hybrid and bounces between both as able. Now this isn't just a hybrid, this is a plug-in electric hybrid. That means you can plug it in and charge the battery packs up and drive it exclusively on electricity. Now the range is only about 32 miles. However, that is more than plenty for most people's daily stops. I mean, bring the kids to school, go shopping, bring the kids to soccer, bring the kids to piano, yada, 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 you get the idea. That's usually within, you know, I think um, the government numbers show that that's usually within a 16 mile range. So this one definitely has plenty of juice to do that without even having to stop for a fill up of electrons. Hiding the big battery pack is usually a problem in most vehicles. However, this is a van, it's got lots of space. And because of a particularly clever design decision with the Pacifica, this one has space to spare. So they've been able to incorporate the battery packs without losing a single cubic foot of total storage capacity. How they do that? Easy. They put them where the stow and go seats normally stow. <laughs> That's right. There's this cavity normally under the seats where they just fold into the floor. Um, this one, you can't do that. You can, if you want the second row out, you have to pull the seats out as we saw earlier. That basically just puts this on par with a normal van, but with the benefit of all electricity driving. If you do manage to deplete the battery, it still operates like a normal hybrid. That is, it'll use electricity when it can, and it'll use gas when it doesn't have enough electricity. You're looking at a total EPA combined of about 30 miles to the gallon, which is best in class. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the best minivan in class, although many people do say it is, and I'm not gonna argue with them because honestly, when it comes to this type of vehicle, we all have things that we're looking for. And when it comes to my personal taste, I want ideal driving dynamics. Yes, it's not a sports car, but it doesn't mean that it still can't be fun to drive. And I honestly find the Honda Odyssey a more fun van to drive, primarily because it has the, um, the V6 up front, which is a fantastic engine, and it's connected to that iVTM4 all-wheel drive system as an option, which is one of my favorite systems in existence. And in a van, it just seems so nicely suited. And of course, I'm right behind a Honda Odyssey because a lot of people buy those. Such an incredibly popular van. All these vans are actually really quite good. I think it's come to the point now where the differences between the three top vans, I mean, you're looking at the Pacifica, the Odyssey, and then the uh, Sienna from Toyota, they're all very, very similar with only minor differences. I don't think you would make a bad choice by picking any of them, honestly, uh, but you know, if I am forced to choose, and since this is my show, I am forced to choose, I would personally pick the Odyssey. But I mean, we're talking small differences between this vehicle and the Odyssey. I do like that this has an electric drivetrain. I think that's actually very cool in this specific type of vehicle, which does a lot of stop and go. I mean, that's the raison d'etre of a minivan. It is stopping and going all day long as you drive your kids to all these little things. And I have two kids. I know what this is like. and I. I really can appreciate the benefit of a van. And the kids love the van. They absolutely go crazy whenever I bring a van home because this one not only has the big captain's chairs in the second row, it also has the entertainment system that is more than just like an iPad screen. 
This one, they're playing together because they're networked and they're networked automatically. You don't have to set up anything. You don't have to go through the cloud. It's, it's just something that happens. And honestly, that ease of use and that approachability kind of makes that second row entertainment system actually valuable. Uh, I mean, that is the whole point, is to get the kids to get along and actually get something out of the trip. Well, that way they're not just watching YouTube, they're engaging with the world around them, specifically that bingo game where you're looking for things on the outside and you're playing against your brother or sister. I think that's actually kind of cool. Now, in terms of design, uh, we've been calling this the big blue whale at home because it's big, it's blue, and it kind of has almost a nautical feel about it. Um, years ago, there was a minivan that was the Nautica version, and this one kind of reminds me of that. Uh, that particular vehicle had blue on the bottom, I think, and white on the top with a yellow pinstripe down the middle. Uh, this one, um, it's blue on the outside, white on the inside with like a metal strip around the steering wheel. So it kind of reminds me of a Chris Craft boat. <laughs> ding, ding, SS Pacifica coming into port nothing specific it had wood paneling in here it would really send that home but it doesn't so maybe they should actually make a Chris Craft version because they're 90 percent of the way there with this vehicle um, interior is nice the steering wheel this metal insert is a little fussy and weird for me um, I'm not a huge fan of that and honestly the light interior especially with kids yeah I know that's not a good decision um, it always seems light and airy when you're shopping for the car but over time uh, it just becomes a mess. Um, although it is leather, so this would wipe up easy. Driving this van is very easy. The visibility is, of course, fantastic because it's a van. Uh, but they've also, you know, pushed that as far as they could. They give you these little cutouts in the front here, uh, which helps with front quarter panel visibility. The mirrors are placed low, again, improving with that visibility. And, of course, we have this huge panoramic sunroof that uh, really lightens up the interior so it, it really is a very pleasant place to be and it's also a pleasant thing to drive not just because of the smooth delivery of the electric motors uh, not just because the v6 um, has enough power for passing and anything that you want but it also has adaptive cruise control so i'm going to go ahead and try this adaptive cruise control i'm going to set it Gonna find it. it. It needs to find my lanes though, and it seems to have, be having trouble finding lanes, which is weird because the paint on these lanes is very obvious. Oh, I think it's speed because I'm doing 35. It needs to go faster. We're not driving fast enough for the lane detection. Ugh. I'll tell you, some vehicles do not have a problem with this. Okay, let's try this lane centering out. Go this way where we don't have people slowing us down. Okay, it now shows that it's detected the lanes because I'm going over 35 and it is looking for cars in front of us, though there aren't any, so we don't have to worry about it. Let's see what it does. Oh, we're ping ponging. We're ping ponging. It's still detecting the lanes. What's it going to do when we got, kind of go over there? Okay. It doesn't really have great centering, but it will ping pong us off the lanes. Uh, and so that's a feature that will, of course, cut down um, fatigue over long distances uh, if you're doing state-to-state -state travel, for example. Uh, but it really isn't an autonomous mode by any measure, not even a rudimentary autonomous mode. Uh, but I think it's kind of like the minimum requirement these days. Uh, this nav system, gorgeous screen, all the functionality you want. It can do CarPlay, it can do XM radio. Uh, the navigation is easy to use. It has apps. Uh, I mean, really, it, it's, it's a cool thing. And of course, this also has a Wi-Fi hotspot for those of you who uh, want to use that kind of thing. Um, you do have to pay an extra fee for it once you get past your initial trial period. Uh, but, you know, for people, let's just say you have a bunch of kids in the car and they all have iPads or iPhones and you're, you know, you're in the position where you want to let them use them, uh, then, yeah, then you can do that and you can use the local Wi-Fi. Everybody can connect to it. Not a big deal. And you don't have to suck up airtime off of your mobile device, which I personally am kind of at my limit every month, even though I have an absurdly big plan. Uh, being in the video world kind of does that.
some families need vans. I mean, if you have a family of say four kids or five kids, you don't really want to stuff them into a big SUV because SUVs are great for certain things, but they are a compromise when it comes to interior cavity space. That is because they have slightly lifted, you know, suspension. They're, they're not quite as tall and they're not as long typically as a minivan. So there is, whether you like a van or not, there are some families that absolutely must have a van and their choices sometimes are a minivan or a cargo van. I mean, really, I, I know some families that are so big they, they need cargo vans. One thing I do like about the plug-in electric hybrid lineup uh, with the Pacifica is that you can get it in multiple trim levels. This one is the top of the line and you're looking at about 50 grand. Now, that's not all said and done because you might qualify for tax credits up to $7,500, which would put it price competitive with a non-hybrid version of the same rough package. You see what, you see what they're doing there? Basically, you can get the batteries for free on this. Although, you know, the, the laws are changing all the time. I don't know when you're watching this video. Hopefully those credits still exist. However, you are shopping for a plug-in electric hybrid, whether it's this van or anything, definitely check the credit situation. You might be able to afford more car than you thought you could afford. This plug-in electric hybrid has basically the same V6 under the hood. However, it puts out less horsepower and that's because it is running on the Atkinson cycle. You're probably wondering what is the Atkinson cycle? Well, let's throw to the studio where I'll explain. Now, if you do want a technical explanation, there are a ton of articles uh, getting into compression and valves online. From a buyer's perspective, all you really need to know is that because of changes to the way that the V6 cylinders fire, it's actually way more efficient. However, that comes at a cost of low end power. In the case of a hybrid powertrain, that difference is made up since electric power has a ton of low end torque. The two together really are a match made in automotive heaven. To show just how dramatic that power loss is, let's do a zero to 60 with the batteries completely depleted. Three, two, one, go. Oh, slow to start. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And there you go. It was smooth, I'll give it that. Did not feel particularly fast. At over nine seconds, it's not very impressive. Based on our testing, that's at least a second slower due to that missing low end torque. But considering it will usually try to be all electric for the first 32 miles, even at freeway speeds up to 70 miles per hour, this really isn't just about being the fastest, just being the most efficient. And I think it's a fair trade. It's really nice that the Pacifica focuses so heavy on tapping those batteries. Mild hybrids will engage the engine all the time. This one, it's only when really necessary. That's nice. You can hit the throttle without having to worry about tapping the dinosaur fuel. And realistically, if you're just driving short distances, you will rarely have to fill up. My personal preference is to have an all wheel drive minivan uh, because if you're taking the kids, you want the topmost safety and convenience and especially here in the Pacific Northwest having a minivan is a great thing uh, and you will want to take it up to the passes for skiing. I uh, can't do that really in a front wheel drive car without throwing chains on and that's always a pain. So I would personally prefer to have like the Honda Odyssey all wheel drive. However, if that does not meet your lifestyle, if you do not need all wheel drive, the Pacifica is a great choice. So here's a real question. Could somebody live in a van like the Pacifica? Sure, why not? And considering the power sockets, Wi-Fi, and the sheer space, it probably would be a nice choice for conversion. I'm really surprised nobody has jumped on that for the SEMA show yet. Hey Chrysler, let's see some sweet van life conversions next year. If you had to live in a van, which one would you choose? Post a comment below. Also, please like and share our videos. We do make them for you, and we live for that kind of validation. I'm Ryan Douthit, and I'll see you next week right here on Driving Sports TV.